Welcome to another video in the Timco Retail Manager series. This series is real world practice for the topics you mostly learned in tutorials. Our goal is to simulate working on a project similar to what you would see in the real world at your job. Today, we're gonna to upgrade our API project and our WPF project to .NET 5. Our class libraries are already .NET Standard 2.0, so those don't need to change. This will bring all of our code up to the latest version of .NET. I think you'll be surprised at how easy this process is. Now, if you've come across something in this video that's confusing, or if you're new to C-sharp and everything seems confusing, I would encourage you to check out my content on imtimcorey.com. I have a whole site dedicated to focused real-world training that will be designed to get you confident in your C-sharp skills. The coolest part is that the proceeds from every sale help fund the free content I provide. So not only do you get prepared for the real world, you also help others as well. Another way that you can help others is by making suggestions on what topics you want to see covered. The more people vote for a topic, the more likely it is they'll cover it. So please leave a comment below this or any video to let me know what you'd like to see me cover in the future. Let's go over to Visual Studio and really assess where we're at with all these projects. So if we click on each project, because they're .NET Core, um, not .NET Framework anymore, just clicking on it once will bring up the project specification. So this one right here is .NET Core App 3.1. It makes it a .NET Core 3.1 application. That's our API. This one here is a .NET Standard 2.0. That's .NET Standard 2.0. Our database solution we can skip. Our UI project is .NET Core App 3.0. So that's a .NET Core 3.0 project, not even 3.1 yet. 3.1 is the long-term supported version, I believe. Um, and this latest one, this last one is .NET Standard 2.0. So what we're going to do is upgrade the API project and the user interface project, which is the WPF project. Now, the API project, you're going to love this. Let's right click on it and go to properties and change from .NET Core App 3.1 to 5.0. Now, let's run this and make sure that it all runs. Now it's doing a, the multiple launch. If you're not familiar, it launches both the API and it launches our WPF application. So we hit log in and make sure the API is functioning. It is, it loads up the sales page. It allows us to add things to the cart, of course, and even check out. So we're all good to go and we're set with our application. So just doing that little change is all it took to upgrade our API project from .NET Core 3.1 to .NET 5. Now, this is a question that I've been asked quite a bit is, well, what, you know, how, how big a deal is it to upgrade to .NET 5? Because it was a big deal to upgrade to .NET Core. When we had a .NET Framework project, upgrading a .NET Core meant redoing a CS proj file and, and reworking a lot of things, but with .NET 5, it's not a major upgrade. Yes, it's a major version difference, and there are changes with .NET 5, but it's not like going from .NET Framework to .NET Core. The, the differences are a lot subtler when it comes to the actual processing of your code and how the templates work. So this is now up to .NET 5. Now, if we create a new .NET 5 API, there would be some additional things. Most notably, it would have Swagger built into it in a way that our API currently does not. And that's because we upgraded the .NET 5. Now, we could bring those in if we wanted to. We already have Swagger installed, but we could bring that in or improve Swagger and upgrade Swagger. And I think that we may do that soon, but Otherwise, that's all we need to do to get our project running and get the benefits of .NET 5 and C Sharp 9. So that's it. Our API is upgraded to .NET 5. Pretty simple, right? Now let's take on the desktop UI because there's a bit of a problem here. We go to dependencies and go to manage NuGet packages and we'll look at Caliburn Micro. This is the MVVM framework that we used to connect 
our views to our view models. And it's a great framework, but it's kind of slowed down. It's almost stopped in development. In fact, the person uh, who is working on it currently, Nigel Sampson, um, he has said that he's pulling away from the project and he's hoping to find someone to take over for him. And I'm not sure that he has yet. But, and that kind of concerns some people. They're like, oh no, what do we do? How do we pull it out? And the answer is we don't pull it out. We leave it in. And if necessary, we leave our project at a certain .NET level and say, that's as far as the WPF project goes. The good thing is that's just a user interface. It's not our entire application. If we had tied this directly to our data access and everything else, now our entire project can't upgrade. But as you just saw, our API is .NET 5 now. So the, the business logic and the, uh, the authentication system and the data access, all of that is now .NET 5, even though our WPF application is .NET Core 3. So we're already in a great place because it's just our user interface and it works. So there's no reason we have to upgrade to .NET 5. But Nigel has been working on one last big set of changes. And with that comes .NET 5 support. So right now we're on alpha version, 105 alpha. And this version, if you look down here, it supports uh, NetCore App 3.0. And it's equals NetCore App 3.0. It does not say equal or greater to, greater than. So it's not gonna support, I'm not even sure it supports .NET Core 3.1. We could try and find out, but let's not let's not mess with that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to upgrade to a later version. If you go over here to the blog post that I pulled up, Caliber Micro's latest release candidate, notice he put it out on Christmas Day, kind of a Christmas present for the community. And there is a number of bug fixes, but additionally, there's support for .NET 5. So this latest version, which at the time that he wrote this was 155 release candidate. He only has on the my git feed, not on the, um, the public new git feed. So we're gonna take this path that he provided here. And instead of copying this, this command right here, which might not be the latest version anymore, I am going to go right to his my git feed and look to see what the latest version is. And in fact, 158 is now the latest version and again, that's a release candidate version. So the cool thing is with my Git, it says, hey, if you got a NuGet um, PM console or package management console, just copy this command right here, which we can just say copy to clipboard, and then go to our package management console, which once that opens up, we're in our desktop UI project. We're gonna paste that in, hit enter. And now you'll notice that our NuGet package now says 4.0.158-RC. So we've upgraded our NuGet package, which if we look at what is actually installed on it, it doesn't even say, uh, or what it supports. But what it supports is .NET 5, which means we can now right click on our desktop UI, go to properties, change from .NET Core 3.0 to .NET 5, save that. Let's do a rebuild solution. Just make sure we clean everything out that um, might be hanging around. And we're going to start this application up. And the API just started just fine. Our WPF application started just fine. We can log in. And once we do, it goes right to the cart. We can add things to the cart. We can check out. Everything's good. It looks like we are all set. We can go user management, um, look for roles to add, add a role to a person, it all works. So our application works, our API works, our WPF project works, and it's all .NET 5. That's all it took to upgrade to .NET 5. So, you know, when you're, when you're asking, you know, how difficult is a .NET 5 upgrade? you saw how difficult it was. It really isn't. 
The big deal is making sure all your dependencies support .NET 5 because that's where you get stuck is, you know, if your dependency does not support it, then you're going to have a problem. But when you build an application like this where it's segmented, where you separate out pieces, then even if one piece doesn't support .NET 5, the rest of them may more easily, especially if you break out your, your logic into class libraries. Like this class library, it's .NET standard 2.0. I could even change that over from .NET standard 2.0. Um, I could move this over and convert it to a .NET core project without a problem because it would all work. Um, these all these things all work in .NET 5, but since it is a .NET standard 2.0 project, it will still be compatible with .NET framework applications, with .NET Core 3 applications or 3.1, or .NET 5 applications. So it's a very broad range of compatibility. So I'll leave it at .NET standard 2.0 so it can still support those other project types if we needed to. So with that, we have all of our updates done. We can go ahead and go over to Git. Notice the big changes we have are just two changes, uh, one to each CS proj file. And if we actually look at what the, um, the changes are, notice that the, the big change is going to .NET 5. That's for the API and the other one going to .NET 5.0-Windows and changing the version number for our Caliburn Micro. Those are the big changes. So with that, we are done. We have everything we need to compile our application, to run our application. Um, the reason it says Windows here is because even though it's a Net 5.0 application, just like um, our API is, let's pull that up and compare it. Um, our API says Net 5.0. The desktop application says net 5.0 windows because it is .NET 5, but it only operates on windows. And the reason why is because it's a WPF application and the W in WPF stands for windows. It is so tied into the windows framework that you can't pull it out without basically rewriting the entire thing, which is kind of what .NET 6 will have is a entirely new rewritten user interface that works cross-platform that's not tied to Windows. But for now, um, because it is WPF, we have this dash Windows, which is a, um, an additional set of, of um, libraries that are specific to Windows, which means we can't install this WPF application on Linux or Mac. Okay, so those are the changes we made. Not a lot of changes as far as quantity goes, but as far as quality, what they do, um, they have made our application faster, if nothing else. Um, .NET 5 has a lot of speed improvements. Every version of .NET Core has made major speed improvements in how things work, and .NET 5 is no exception. So just making those changes made our application faster. So upgrade to .NET 5. I can leave that message like so. And I'm going to, um, I would normally do a, a fetch first to see if there's anything on the server, but I know it's not. So I'm going to stage and push, which is going to um, send that out to the server. And we're all good. We're now on our master branch. So that's it for the changes for this video. Didn't seem like a lot, right? But that's a big deal to move from .NET Core 3 and 3.1 over to .NET 5. That'll provide some additional uh, benefits to us, including being able to use some of the new uh, C Sharp 9 stuff, plus the speed solutions. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. In the next video for Timco Retail Manager, I think what we'll do is we'll start in on the inventory management. I wanna get this, um, this user interface. So we have the uh, this view right here the uh, sales view where, and that's not a great picture. There you go, come on. Um, where we put the items in the cart, we check out, and it just kind of blanks the cart out and the items go back in there and the quantity is the same. That's because we 
did not wire up actually making a purchase because we didn't have a way to put inventory back. So we're gonna work on, start working on the, uh, a way to add inventory to our system so that we can also hook up the way to take inventory out of our system, which is this sales page. So essentially we're gonna wire up as checkout to actually do something once we have the ability to um, put stuff into our inventory, okay? So that's coming up next in the next uh, video for the Timco Retail Manager. Let me know if you have any questions or thoughts or questions, or yeah, questions, thoughts, or questions. Um, any thoughts on this video or going forward what we should be doing, okay? Thanks for watching, and as always, I am Tim Corey.